Hi team, Claire here from My Mortgage. Today I just want to talk a little bit about making offers on properties, particularly as a first home buyer, as they seem to be giving a lot of advice in that space at the moment. So firstly, the first thing to establish is whether or not you're in competition for uh, the property that you're interested in. So if there's two or three parties, um, generally an agent will call for multi-offers or you'll need to put your best offer forward. And in that situation, it's really useful to know who else is interested, what else they might be offering, if possible, and what their conditions might be. So speaking of conditions, what we want to do when we're making an offer is keep those conditions as short as possible and as relevant as possible as well. So to give you an example, if we have been able to get you a pre-approval already from the bank, we may need only a shorter finance clause, so potentially only up to five working days to confirm the property. However, if you do have KiwiSaver and you're using that to pay your deposit, we may need a slightly longer finance clause of 10 to maybe 15 days, depending a little bit on your situation. The other thing to consider is a registered valuation, which can take up to 10 working days as well. So again, important to just talk to us about what's required or have a look at your loan offer and how we've explained it to you. If you don't, have a lot of other people interested in the property, then that gives you free reign to negotiate directly with the vendor, which is an awesome position to be in. So usually in this situation, I'd recommend that you start a little bit lower than the, the asking price or the price that you think might be the price that the vendor is asking for or wants to get, um, and then negotiate from there. And normally a vendor, as long as you're not too far away from that price, they will have a chat to you about how you can kind of meet in the middle. A couple of other tips on making offers, try to stick with a bit of a random number. So if you're offering somewhere around 550, try and stick with 548 or 552 um, rather than that round number because often people do go in round numbers and you may be successful um, up in competition against other people with a slightly random number. Um, the other thing to consider as well um, is whether or not the vendor wants a short settlement or a long settlement or how you could maybe fit in with their needs. So if the property is empty or maybe they've moved out, they've moved into a new property or they're selling a rental property, um, they might like a short settlement. Often if it's been occupied for a while, unoccupied for a while, they might be paying a mortgage or paying some costs associated with the property that they'd like to make happen really quickly. So a couple of my first home buyers have said, hey, you know, two to three weeks for settlement um, and that's probably going to satisfy the vendor's needs. On the flip side, they might not have found anywhere to go yet. So you can also be really flexible with a long settlement date as well, up to two, three months. Sometimes if that purchaser, um, purchase person who you're purchasing off um, has had tenants, they may need to give notice of 60 to 90 days depending on the situation. Um, so being really flexible about that is really key as well. So hopefully that's given you a few tips on how to make offers on properties and how to be successful. Once you've had your offer accepted, please make sure you flick through the sale and purchase agreement once it's signed and dated by all parties through to our team so that we can move things forward from a finance perspective for you. Look forward to seeing your accepted offers and giving further advice if you need. Talk soon.